Welcome everyone uh, to another episode, to another Learn Life episode on Learn TV. My name is Thomas Smauter. I'm here with Pierre Romo. How Welcome are you doing, Pierre. Thomas? Doing pretty well, doing pretty well. We are um, part of the Azure Cloud Advocates and we have the pleasure today to go, one, to go through one of the uh, Microsoft Learn modules today together with you. Uh, with all our attendees. Uh, so feel free to actually join our uh, Microsoft Learn module. And it's going to be about hybrid networking infrastructure, right, Pierre? Yeah. Um, when you're starting with uh, Azure and you're thinking about hybrid networking, you really think you really need to wrap your mind around you're basically extended the cap extending the capabilities of your own data center or your own uh, environment. So hybrid a network is really, really important to to know all the the basics and to know how to uh, navigate that. Absolutely, absolutely. And who would we be if we would not have an awesome Microsoft Learn module on Microsoft Learn covering this? Um, and this is where we actually invite you to join this um, like live, and you can actually open this up as well as watching us and talking about it. Uh, so we have a QR code here. We have a link in here. Uh, you can actually go through that as well. And even if you just want to watch us today, you can then later on go actually through that learn module uh, as well. Um, so Pierre, shall we actually have a look at the learn module? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, uh, so let me perfect. There we go. Perfect. So we have the learn module here. I opened it already up uh, on Microsoft Learn. And if we actually go to the introduction part, uh, we want to quickly spend some time to actually uh, explain um, for whom this learn module is and why we would take this learn module. So Pierre, can you help me out here a little bit and talk a little bit about um, why I would take this learn module? Well, you want to be able to learn to take this learn module if you're not completely familiar with uh, describing all of the uh, parts of the Azure networking uh, solutions because there is there's multiple of them. Uh, you want to know you want to go through this if you're wondering how you can connect your own environment or your users to your Azure environment using VPN technology. Uh, you want to be able to uh, take this module if you're looking to create a VPN gateway uh, through using the portal or PowerShell. Uh, if you've got questions about Express Route. Uh, we will uh, go through this and explain what exactly Express Route is and how you it becomes um, very useful for you. Uh, and also, if you have if you are in a distributed environment, so if you've got multiple environments uh, uh, around the world and you don't want to spend the money to like basically lay your own fiber and how you can use the the Azure WAN uh, to to help you uh, connect all of these different places and of course, the culpable, uh, uh, the, the thing that always breaks, we it seems to on the internet, uh, DNS. <laughs> so how to find out how your DNS resolution can be set up so that all of your machines, whether they're on-prem or in cloud, can resolve each other and the connectivity go on properly. No, that's awesome. Again, I think I'm very looking forward to the DNS part because I just had some like, issues with that in my own network and happily was like actually to fix it. So let's have a look um, on what you're actually going to learn. And I think Pierre covered it pretty well um, on who is going to look at this, especially if you are now coming from this on-premises world and you're going into the cloud world, your organization is doing that. And we know for a fact, right, that a lot of organizations are not going to be just cloud only. They're going to end up being in a hybrid state, and that is going to be uh, where they are and how they take advantage of it. And Azure is doing actually a great job in that. So if you look at the learning objectives here, we're really going to go and have a look at uh, Azure network topology. So even if you're not familiar with the terms yet, if you don't know what a VNet is or any like things like that, we're going to dive in and describe these and going to go through that as well. And then as Pierre mentioned, we're going to talk about how you actually implement an Azure VPN connection because this is going to be something a lot of you are going to going to um, hit up there as well. Uh, and then how like the actually there are different types of VPN gateways, so we're going to also have a look at that. And then Pierre already said we're going to have a look at what Express Route is. We're going to look at what Azure Virtual WAN is, and we're going to see how we're actually going to implement 
uh, DNS re resolution in a hybrid environment. So we also like the learn module obviously gives us all some prerequisites, right? So you should be a little bit familiar with the on-premises world. Um, we're going to really cover a little bit about the, the Azure part of things, um, but you should really be uh, familiar with uh, some of the Windows Server stuff you were doing of the hybrid ne of networking on-prem and how automation works and how computer networks work in general, right? Yeah, and one skill that anybody who's been managing networks uh, on-prem is absolutely crucial is the fact that yeah, like your 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 ad, your IP addressing, like your 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 address space, your subnet, your subnet masks, uh, how you can have multiple areas and all connect together within the same address space. Uh, these skills transfer very very well into the cloud. So if you if you're a networking person and you take care of your network on prem, half the battle is already won. Exactly. So that that's a good point. So they're definitely helpful, but um, don't think that it's actually the same, right? I've seen that with many, many customers. So they ended up with doing like what they had on prem, just doing the exact same thing in the cloud. And that's probably not the smartest thing to do, right? You definitely can use your skills you already have, yes. but there is definitely some change how you should set up your environment as well. Well, because so, you you end up with two different uh, environments with the exact same address space, and then they won't route between the two of them. So you have to extend that data center. For yeah, absolutely. For example, as well, and also like obviously, just the way we set up things is, is slightly different, right? We can do like a little bit more uh, fancy things with software-defined networking and stuff. So let's try just dive in. And again, at the end, we will have also a knowledge check for you so and for us as well to actually see um, if we understood what, what's going there. So let's in, go into the introduction part. Uh, this is basically the first unit of this learn module. And it kind of like sets the stage a little bit on where we are. And then we're just going to repeat a little bit um, on what the what the learn module says. And it's actually like exactly what Pierre and I just told you about. It's actually making a scenario where um, Contoso, a well, very well-known fictional company in, in Microsoft, uh, is actually in this on-premises world, right? You can see here, uh, it runs a couple of Windows Server uh, 2012 R2 hosts, um, and um, basically they're running these stuff uh, on-premises. But they realize that they need to be um, more agile, more flexibility, and want to take advantage of the cloud. And so, the kind of like we are basically the lead engineers and, and administrators, and we're going to actually have a look how we can actually take advantage of Azure um, uh, to make our like our business more successful. And one of the things, obviously, we need to set up, and that is what we're going to look at this module, is seeing how can we actually deploy stuff in Azure and have our on-prem world, and how can they actually be connected to each other and talk to each other uh, so that our apps can be distributed about different from different locations as well. Yeah, and I, I, I will know. Uh, I will suggest to our Contoso management that we should really go to Windows Server 2022 uh, <laughs> because of all of the added hybrid capabilities that are built in. But that's for another uh, another episode. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so let's dive in and we talk about. I think this is one of the units we really want to talk about and spend some time with you here uh, to describe the Azure network topologies and a little bit explaining on what the different things we have here, right? Uh, I think this is very important to understand. So we have all the base set up and we know about the different things we actually need to get to work uh, uh, as well. Yep. So first up, obviously the thing I want we want to learn about is the virtual network, right? What is a virtual network? And we also often refer to it as a VNet. So this is where we actually have a basically a boundary um, of a private IP address space, where we then also can create different um, subnets within that um, VNet. And automatically, all these subnets within that VNet can actually talk to each other. Um, and in general, and I, I'll just mention that, they should not really overlap with your on-prem uh, environment as, as well. So that is actually what a subnet, uh, what a virtual network is. And um, I want to quickly draw this actually to you uh, on my white screen here uh, um, to actually see um, how that could look like. So from a from a drawing perspective, we have a VNet here. So this is an Azure VNet. And we can give this an address space. 
So let's say this is 10.10.0.0 .10 .0 um, slash 16. So this is basically going to be our uh, virtual network, um, our VNet with that address space. You can have multiple address spaces within that. You can also add them later to that VNet. And I'm sure we can show you that a little bit, how that actually then works in the portal. Um, but then you can, within that VNet, oops, this, I didn't want to take that color. I actually want to switch. You can have different subnets. So I can then create a subnet. Uh, let's say here I do 10.10.1.0, .10 whatever, the drawing is not perfect here. Um, this is the first subnet. And then I can have an additional subnet here, for example, for 10.2.0 <laughs> 10 slash 24. Uh, and you can imagine we can go on and create uh, a lot of different subnets within that. So we can like make sure that we have different boundaries uh, and uh, between different applications or different uh, departments as well, depending on how your setup works. So that is actually uh, a pretty cool thing to do, right, Pierre? Yes, yes, absolutely. So we will we will talk about VNets later on much, much more. Uh, but I think that is very important to understand. Um, and you can obviously have multiple virtual networks. Actually, one important other fact I want to add, once one virtual network can only be deployed in one Azure region. So if your company is working with multiple Azure regions, you're going to have at least uh, where you deployed Azure VMs, you're going to have at least two virtual subnets, right? You have one in one region and another one in the other one and the other region. And then we will also talk about how you can connect these as well in just a bit. That's right. So Pierre, you want to talk a little bit about what a network interface is, because um, obviously our virtual machines need to be connected somehow um, to that virtual network, right? Yes. Uh, well, normally when you're on-prem, uh, your machine comes with a physical NIC, and you once you, it's it's created by default when you install the OS. Uh, you just have to make sure that it assigns the right IP address. But in a virtual world, uh, especially in Azure, you have to define the the, the NIC or, or the vNIC um, either while you're creating the VM, or you can you can create them uh, separately and then associate them with the, the specific uh, uh, virtual machine. So your VNet oh. will have uh, the same as a normal uh, VNet in terms of IP address, subnet mask, and everything else, but it's assigned to a uh, virtual machine. So it's separate. So in your, when you're looking at your resources uh, within your resource group, you'll see the virtual machine, then on, and then you'll also see the storage for that virtual machine, but you'll also see the uh, separately the, uh, the NIC that's associated with that. So you can create one or multiple NICs for uh, each VM and then associate them with a subnet uh, so that they can communicate with other VMs in your environment. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. So again, as you said, like these are gonna be actually objects in Azure as well. So I can actually take these VNets and then put it on one VM and also put it at another VM later on or remove, or remove and add additional VNICs uh, as well to, to those interfaces. and. Here's a screenshot, by the way, also in the Learn module, where exactly we see that, that this is the virtual network. This is how it shows up in the Azure portal. You can see here uh, the address space, a little bit different from what I had, but it's 10.0.0.0.16. .0 .0 .0 um, and then on the bottom, you can actually see the connected devices, which are actually network interfaces, right? So you can see here, okay, this is what is connected. And you can also see to which subnet within that virtual network they're actually connected. So that is that is basically how we can can manage this uh, as well. Yeah, so as long as as far as the the virtual network is concerned, it never connects to a VM, it connects to the NIC that's associated with the VM. Okay, you have, to, you have to be careful when not careful, but you have to be conscious of that uh, distinction when you're managing your environment. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Perfect. Um, and again, also, by the way, in the meantime, while we're on this, um, I really highly encourage you uh, to basically ask your questions. We will see uh, what's going on in the chat, and we will see if we can um, answer a couple of your questions um, in the chat itself. So the next thing we actually want to talk about, and I know, Pierre, that you obviously know a lot about Network Security Group, or NSGs, as we also call them. Um, and as the name says, 
they probably make our network more secure. Can we? Can you explain a little bit what an NSG does and and how it works? Yes. So an NSG is an object or a, uh, a configuration that filters traffic within your within and uh, in and out of your network. It's not a firewall. So okay. this is not something, it will not do a, a packet inspection. It's, it's strictly a, uh, a, de a source to destination over which port, over which protocol, and whether or not you allow it or or deny it. So oh, okay. I, have a, I have a quick, um, let me see which one I have here. Oh, so this is a um, an example of a more involved network security group that you would typically have uh, when you're just creating VMs. Um, and in this case, uh, just like uh, most firewalls, you have a set of rules and those rules are uh, interpreted from the lowest number to the highest number. So that's why we start with 100 in this one and then 101 and 500 and 501 and so on. But it's where the name that we gave that particular rule, the port that it's going to be um, and, uh, looking at, uh, and the protocol, the source to the destination and whether I allow it. The nice okay. thing with this is that there are there are uh, referenceable variables in there, like the internet, the source is the internet. So we don't have to start or do the 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 that you would normally do in a firewall. You just say, if it's coming from the internet, it's outside of Azure and it's going wherever you define it, then you can either allow it or, or um, uh, deny it. There's also the virtual network. So if it's from within your virtual network on any subnet, any NIC, any uh, VM or any service to another virtual, to the same virtual subnet to always allow it if it's coming from your load balancer. So there are pre-configured um, ranges, if I could say, or space. Uh, yeah, exactly, uh, that you can do uh, to, uh, to do that. But... I've been asked many times when we did Ignite, when we did uh, Microsoft Ignite the tour, uh, that if I had uh, NSGs or network security group, do I really need a firewall? NSGs are not a firewall. They're, they're allowing you to segregate and control the traffic within your subnet, but they are not a, something that will do a packet inspection. That is an Azure firewall, which we will talk about a little bit later. Okay, so basically, it's as I said, it's basically a it's very simple um, allow or deny list to like filter the network traffic. And what I think is very important, and you already mentioned that I can actually assign a um, network security group to an Azure, to a virtual NIC of an Azure VM, yes. uh, or I can, as you also mentioned, I can also assign it on the subnet level, which obviously is much much more like handy if you have. Um, it, so you don't need to like micromanagement all the rules on uh, one specific uh, on each of the VMs, for example. So I think that is that is very important. And as you can see here, the Microsoft Learn module also has some good graph graphs here available, actually explaining this as well how actually the assignment, for example, also for a subnet can work, but then also how you can actually have it um, assigned to a specific uh, virtual NIC of a VM. Yeah, and each uh, network security group can be, as you mentioned, uh, assigned to a subnet or an ICC, but it can also be assigned to both. So you have to be careful when you're doing your configuration because if you assign it to both, then it'll be uh, evaluated twice, yeah. uh, which can introduce latency. So it's just proper design that if you decide to do uh, NSGs to subnets or NSGs to NIC, be careful that you're not duplicating efforts here. Okay, no, that makes sense. So yeah, it's always like with these rules, you want to make sure that you actually not have too many layers of it. Actually, are very clear where a setting is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not that you at one point decide to change one setting, but you only change it on the subnet level, and you still have one assigned to a virtual machine uh, or to a virtual network adapter of the virtual machine, uh, and then still does it doesn't work, and no one finds out why, right? So. Um, no, that's a great tool. And by the way, also NSGs, usually if you just go to the portal and you create the VM, there's always an NSG basically assigned to this by default, right? So if, if you actually want to do this, you need to actually basically go and change that in, in settings as well. And this is also important because you want to, obviously, in some cases, you want to 
have the management port of a VM open from the public internet, depending on what you're doing. But in many cases, you probably don't want to do that. And you probably don't even want to assign a public IP address, but um, in some cases you have. So Pierre, you also mentioned Azure Firewall. And yes. so that for now is a firewall, right? Yes, right. That's a layer three to layer seven um, firewall. So it does do an, impact, an inspection of the packets. Uh, you can specify ports, uh, but it will st still look uh, at the packet more uh, deeply uh, at the network level, not just at the application level, and, and uh, allow or uh, deny that configuration. And it is very important when you're designing your environment with firewalls in mind to not only inspect and control traffic uh, in and out from the internet, but also uh, I used to I refer to it as like not only east west but also north south. So what's coming from on-prem to the cloud and what's going from the cloud to on-prem. Okay, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this, this, this graphic shows it pretty, pretty well. One thing I also want to mention, by the way, is if you set this up, and I think there's also part of Learn Module, and we'll talk about that in just, um, the Azure Firewall also gets a static public IP address uh, for VNet resources. So what often is a problem if, if you're, for example, a company, um, running certain workloads, right? And then you have different VMs running in Azure and they connect actually to the internet. Um, they like come with a public IP address at, at one point as a source to something, right? And with the Azure Firewall in place, we can actually go and say, hey, this is the public IP address and all the VMs who are actually doing outbound traffic, they go out with that IP address in, in mind, right? Yeah, just, um, just like on-prem, it does net network address translation and you can have uh, full control of that. And on top of that, you can put load balancers and a front door and other services uh, to manage uh, traffic uh, once it's outside or coming from the outside of your network as well. But today we're just going to talk about sure. firewalls. I, I think one thing we need to mention when we look at this graph, by the way, which is not really something we talk about, but it's, it's actually how you set up uh, the network architecture. And so we see here that we have two like uh, spoke networks or VNets, and then we have a centralized hub where the Azure Firewall is deployed. And that is actually what we call a hub and spoke uh, topology, network topology. So if you go back to quickly on my whiteboard, I just want to quickly like explain this to you why we would actually do that. So again, black we have for the VNets. So obviously we would create a VNet, let's say this is VNet one, and we have some applications in that, right? And so we have some servers and, and all the stuff uh, in that VNet. And we have, for example, also our on-premises environment. And since I'm a very good drawer, this is, this is our on-prem environment. <laughs> um, very beautiful here. Uh, and usually we would actually then connect here, and we will talk about VPNs in just a bit, but we would connect the v VPN connection here. Now, think about it. We're not just having one VNet, right? We probably have multiple VNets. So we will have VNet 2, we will have VNet uh, 3. So what would happen is that we would need to create multiples of these connections to our on-prem environment. And that is actually can get very complex to actually manage that. So one of the things we're doing, and, and this is not just for the Azure Firewall, but also for other things, is we actually connect, the, connect we call these, these VNets now 1, 2, and 3. Those are the spokes, right? Um, so we create a hub VNet. And what we do here is we do a VNet peering um, with these spoke networks um, to these to the hub network. Like, let's call that hub. And this one is spoke. Spoke. Um, and then we can just have the connection, the VPN basically here. Yep. Uh, to our on-prem network. And we can actually do the things in the spokes network, whatever we want. Uh, we can actually control that nicely and manage that nicely but yeah, it, that simplifies the whole network architecture a lot yeah and, and you mentioned uh peering uh because we haven't really covered that yet uh peering virtual network peering uh in azure is a method uh, where we can actually connect to two networks or two virtual networks that may be in the same region or in multiple regions uh together without having to deploy uh virtual gateways in each of them. So it's just a simplified way of connecting those virtual networks. Uh, and and it allows you to do that hub and spoke 
uh, but you still have to figure out where you're going to put your firewall uh, to control the traffic. So if you were going to control the traffic uh, in that situation, you may want to have the, the the firewall in your hub network yeah. or in front of your hub network. Yes. Yeah, I think this is a very important part, by the way, which um, like just if you get started, your organization sets up networking, think about deploying a hub and spoke network architecture, right? Go and read about this. I think this is going to be very crucial to how you do the setup of your environment. Um, uh, not necessarily depending on all the other things you're doing, but um, you will thank me later <laughs> to, to have that. And we will just talk about this uh, a little bit later as well, because there are other technologies like the Azure Virtual WAN, which is also part of that Learn module, uh, which can help us setting this up as well. It's like peering on steroids. <laughs> exactly. That's a, that's a nice way of putting it. And then we already mentioned um, that we somehow obviously need now to connect the cloud world together with the on-prem world, right? And this can be done using Azure VPN. And then for that, we're going to deploy a VPN gateway. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a bit. Um, but then there is also a other option um, called Express Route, right? Yes. So, so Express Route or Express Route, depending on which part of the world you live in, um, is really an MPLS segment provided by a partner, so a telco, that terminates in both, the endpoints are both uh, one in Azure, uh, in one of our data centers or one of our edge uh, endpoint, and the other one is in your data center. So it becomes a very secure, very robust uh, MPLS segment that connects your environment to our environment, uh, encrypted and robust, so for you to use. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And again, we're going to have a look at that in also just a bit. And it also, I just want to say, it's not just a VPN replacement. There's also some cool stuff if you're using public uh, services in Azure um, or also in Office 365, for example, uh, as well. And then last but not least, uh, we have, well, not, not, not even last, there's something more, but one of the last things we want to talk about is the Azure Virtual WAN, which again, we're going to talk about much, much more later. And I already mentioned, that this is kind of, or, or you mentioned it, put it very nicely, Pierre, uh, basically peering on steroids, right? Yeah. So if you have, uh, we talked about our spoke networks earlier or spoke VNets, uh, you could have those uh, around the world and have them either connected by a peering, but you could also use the a virtual WAN to allow for not only your VNets to talk to each other, but your... Let's say you have a user that's in North America connecting connecting to a uh, point to site VPN, which we will cover uh, in more detail a little later, and then going through the uh, Azure uh, virtual WAN to connect to the uh, London office, for example. So okay. Yeah. Leveraging the 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 power of the Azure backbone for your benefits without having to pay multiple. Uh, providers to give you that that same functionality. Yeah, no, awesome. Again, this is this is like uh, that covers a lot of different technology. And then, really, if you get about serious about it, um, you can really combine the the, the things we're going to talk about, like Express Route, VPN, uh, routing, Azure Firewall, and all that in the Azure Azure Virtual Van. And then, last thing, like I want to talk about, is the Azure Subnet extension. Right, we get a lot of questions from customer. Um, like how can I use the same subnet in Azure um, uh, and also on-prem, right? And yeah. like for a long, very long time, we did not have an answer for that. And usually we also don't recommend it to actually set that up for a long, stable environment. You actually should not have overlapping IP address spaces. Now, I know that in some cases, you probably, during a migration process, you actually need to have this in place, right? You probably cannot move everything and there are still dependencies on IP addresses or you don't have working DNS. <laughs> so uh, then there, it makes absolutely a lot of sense. And we have something called the Azure subnet extension, uh, which we have here, which allows you basically to extend um, your on-premises subnet to the Azure one as well. Uh, over an express route or VPN connection. So while you're in, for example, a migration state or anything, um, you can actually do this uh, to set this up. Yeah, this is most useful when you have um, workloads where you cannot change the IP address, but you 
you still need to be able to to, to connect that or migrate parts of it. Uh, but it is, as you mentioned, a, a stopgap measure. You should not be looking at Azure subnet extension for a long term uh, as a solution. It's basically to to allow you to give you the time that you need in order for you to do the rest of the migration of all of these workloads. And that way you can like reassign those IP address once they've been moved off of that on-prem subnet. Okay, now perfect. So let's go into the next unit of this learn module, uh, which actually talk, which actually writes about the Azure VPN options. Yep. And there is a lot to cover here as well, right? Uh, the VPN actually stands for Virtual Private Network. And as we mentioned, it allows us to connect over a private connect, well, not private, but over the internet and an encrypted tunnel, basically, um, to your, in, in this case, to your Azure environment or from your on-prem to your Azure environment and the other way around um, to actually make this secure. You probably have used VPN for your company for a very long time to actually connect to your company or your company to connect to other places. Um, so there are multiple options here. And one thing is actually the VPN gateway we actually need to deploy, right? Yes. So the VPN gateway pretty much is, it, first of all, it's the same virtual gateway that you deploy uh, for all of those uh, gateway design, whether or not it's for site to site, um, point to site, multi-site, or VNet to VNet. Uh, and But VNet to VNet, as we mentioned a little earlier, uh, can be achieved with other uh, technologies such as Azure WAN or uh, VNet peering. Uh, yeah. But the VPN does give you uh, encryption in between, uh, which the other just transfer the, uh, the, the, the the packets back and forth. Yeah. No, I remember like VNet to VNet was especially a thing when there was no <laughs> uh, VNet peering in the past, um, uh, which was pretty handy in that way to connect different subnets together. Mm -hmm. But so we talked a little bit about that and you meant listed these. So can you explain a little bit like what is a site to site VPN connection? What does that mean? So a site to site uh, is a, uh, a tunnel over the internet uh, that is basically terminated uh, one in the uh, virtual network gateway that you've cre that you create uh, inside of your VNet. Your virtual network and the other one at your uh on prem on prem so for example i personally here it's not on right now but i do have a uh, vpn uh site to site from my home office to my test subscription uh, a couple of things that you actually require is uh you actually require a uh static ip you can't it, dynamic ip will only work until the ip changes so depending on your internet provider, uh, that may uh, be often or never. Uh, but it is uh, encrypted uh, using IPsec uh, to support your cross-premises and hybrid configuration. So once this is on and your DNS is set up properly, uh, you can, from any machine on-prem, if, uh, if you're not filtering that traffic, you can connect uh, to any of those machines on the other side of the tunnel. So it makes it... Instead of having everybody doing a point to site to uh, from uh, your branch offices to your um, Azure virtual network to your resources that are there, you set up one site to site VPN and everybody tunnels through it. Okay, so that is actually what like like we could have a look at here, like the ten dot zero dot zero dot zero slash twenty four um, connecting through that tunnel and speaking like or talking to machines in 10.10.0.0.16 uh, slash .16, 16 um, over the internet, basically, but in that encrypted uh, tunnel. And you were That's speaking right. about, if you look at there, uh, we have a VPN uh, VIP uh, on the Azure gateway side, where it says on the right side, where it says VPN gateway, that is actually the one deployed in Azure. It's like 131.1.1.1. That's a public IP address. And then you also mentioned the other static IP address we need uh, on your side, on the on-premises side, basically, uh, which is here, the 33.2.1.5. Um, so right. again, just to, to highlight that in the graphic uh, as well. And, and a multi-site, the next, uh, the next item is the multi-site, uh, which is exactly the same, uh, except that you have branch one and branch two. Uh, so, or in, the, in this graphic, your, your HQ and your uh, on-prem local site number two 
uh, are connecting over separate tunnel to the same uh, VPN gateway endpoint uh, in your in Azure. So it's okay. exactly the same. It's just one more connection. So the setup okay. the setup is the same. The configuration is the same. You just create uh, a separate connection. And I forgot this to mention earlier uh, that the one of the nice things with that is that you control the keys. So the keys for the encryption are yours. So you can set up your own key. So you can manage how you um, change those keys on a regular basis or whatever your compliance requirements are uh, in terms of key management. Okay, no, that's good. And we also know when we talk about VPN gateways, you can only have one VPN gateway uh, per virtual network. And yeah. we have different sizes of VPN gateways. Uh, well, that statement is not 100% true because we can have two if, if it's HA, right? We can set it up high available, but you basically get one VPN gateway you can actually use. And then we have different sizes uh, there, um, it, depending on how much bandwidth you, for example, need, right? Yeah, bandwidth and latency will play a role. So you have to make sure that you uh, scale, uh, size them properly. However, uh, this being uh, a pay-as-you-go or a uh, paid service, uh, you can update your size. So if you realize that at one point you you did not pick a uh, SKU that was large enough to support your environment, then you can actually uh, up upsize it and, right. and take advantage of that. Perfect. And then last but not least, the point to side VPN, and that is actually a pretty uh, easy thing well, to set up. Um, and it basically allows you to like deploy a VPN client on machines of people. So like, for example, here on my Windows 11 machine, I have a VPN client set up uh, and I'm connected to my virtual network or to the VPN gateway um, or the Azure VPN gateway in Azure. Um, and then it creates this point to site uh, SSB tunnel, for example. Um, we open, we all, uh, also support open SSL as well, but in the Windows world, we use SSTP uh, for that um, also very often. Um, so uh, then it allows me to like wherever I am, like I'm like, for example, I'm working from home. I don't need to have a gateway with a static IP address or anything. I yep. just start my VPN client and I can connect to the network, to the network too. That's right. So in the in the good old days before the age of the human malware, when we would work from airports and Starbucks and hotels, uh, we could securely connect to our resources in Azure using the point to site. Yeah. No, I have. I also have a couple of customers who set this up, for example, as kind of like a disaster recovery uh, space. If they think about, for example, they have their uh, uh, headquarter and the headquarter goes down for some reason that the employees at least could connect still to the Azure resources with some notebooks from working from home or at other places. So they can quickly go back to work uh, in case of a disaster, right? Which is, depending on the company, is very, very important as well. And if you don't have multiple sites in place uh, as well. And then you mentioned VNet to VNet, which actually allows us to connect like different uh, virtual networks together using these gateways. So if you have two virtual networks in Azure, you can com connect them using the VNet gateway. Again, I would still say that there are probably other options, like for example, um, to use uh, VNet peering, uh, which is today probably in many cases, the, the better approach uh, to do and the more efficient approach, especially. Uh, but still you could do VNet uh, gateways um, uh, as well. And then last but not least, so this is this is like important. And I know that there's a lot of customers are interested in this. So we now actually could actually start working, right? Uh, but we also have something called Express Route. And you were very nicely describing that uh, just before that a little bit. Sorry, say I was reading the comments in the uh, in the chat. <laughs> say that nice. again. So we are very interactive here. So again, just a quick yeah. reminder, ask your questions in the chat. We will try to answer all of these um, as well. Uh, we were just talking about like, okay, so we, we actually could use VPN. We could use site-to-site -side VPN, um, for example, to connect our on-premises environment to the Azure uh, world. But um, there are obviously some constraints, right? Sometimes I have troubles with like latency or like a VPN. It's still encrypted, but it still goes over the public um, internet, right? It's still connected, it goes over the public internet. And That's again, right. there's some latency and some bandwidth concerns with that as well. So with Express Route, Pierre, we can actually address these. 
Yeah, we can address these because you. Uh, it, this is a dedicated uh, MPLS segment, as I mentioned, uh, from your network to our network uh, that is completely encrypted, that is very robust, uh, and it's provided by your uh, telco or the, the, the express route partner in your region. So different, different countries will have different partners. Uh, but also the partner actually has to have redundancy in their connection uh, hardware. So the, all of the network that manages that connection uh, is redundant and, and built on high availability with a high availability model. It's, oh. bit, it's more expensive, uh, but in some cases, like I know I've had some customers in the past where by compliance uh, requirement, because they were financial or healthcare or whatnot, uh, needed, they couldn't, were not allowed to go over public internet even in an encrypted tunnel. So Express Route uh, fit that bill. Yeah, no, it's absolutely true. And it still uses the, the VPN gateway, obviously, to set this up as well. Um, yep. uh, and again, I, there's many reasons, as you just mentioned, compliance is one, but then there's also, for example, latency and also like, like traffic-wise, right? We have different offerings there um, where like outgoing traffic, for example, to the on-prem world is usually with a cost. There's also some like express route setups, I think, which will cover that as well in the pricing part. So um, it, like for a lot of companies who are doing serious work with Azure, um, they're definitely going to have a look at the um, express route option. And you can still have both in place, right? So for example, what I see customers here, and it's very sure nicely shown in this graphic, we have actually express route in place, um, this setup. But then they have, for example, also VPN connections uh, for other locations or as a fallback, for example, for a failover scenario where, for example, at one point, even though it's a redundant connection and it should nothing happen, right? There can always be something. So they could actually set up a additional VPN gateway as kind of like a fallback uh, as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you are definitely the, the expert to talk about when it comes to implementing VPN gateways. So I know that this is something a lot of people get confused by. There, there's a selection you can do by policy-based or root-based configurations, right? Okay, my rule of thumb, avoid policy base as much as you can. Uh, go with a route base. Uh, policy base means that you have to define a static IP. It's basically based on a static IP ma mapping. So if you something changes in your infrastructure, you'll have to update that, that mapping uh, in your policy to say from this to this now allow through the firewall and, and create that connection. Route base uh, is kind of like the default and it uh, it's a lot simpler to use and manage and deploy. Uh, and it's, uh, I think at some point, um, it, it is basically the preferred way of doing it. So uh, route base is, uh, or if you're on-prem and oh, I, there's a note right there. So if you create a new subnet in your VNet, then you have to go and update your um, gateway. And updating a gateway is, in some cases, is not as easy as changing in configuration. In some cases, you almost have to uh, tear it down and recreate it. So you have to be careful and know ahead of time, uh, if you're picking policy base, why you want to do this. Yeah. And so there's also many constraints. Obviously, if you take, take policy base, you could, for example, not do like work like connections between virtual networks. You cannot do the point to site uh, yeah. connection. You cannot do multi site connections uh, or coexistent with Express Route. So you actually, for these, you need to have the root based um, VPN connection in place, right? Yeah, absolutely. So then the module goes actually into a little bit of how this actually works. And I know you probably have a demo for us to show instead of us going through this, because again, every one of you, you can actually go out and read this as well. Um, yeah. Is it already time for the demo? Yeah, let's, let's, let's run the video. Uh, and I, for everybody, uh, this is a recorded video and it's also linked in the, um, in the learning path. Uh, I created that a little while ago, and it's because creating the virtual uh, the the VPN gateway can take up to 25, 30 minutes. Uh, so it's really hard to demo in when we're looking at an hour, an hour and fifteen minute kind of session uh, because it would take really half the time. So let's run this video. But basically, when to create this, you need to uh, be able to 
create the virtual network ahead of time. I'm trying to make sure that it's running. Yeah, so now we create the virtual network. Uh, we, we pick a resource group, so I'll give it a name. So Contoso uh, resource group, and I want to give an, a, a name to my virtual network. And if you're connect creating a virtual network uh, without the gateway, that's exactly the same thing. So you give it an address space. So I'm going to take the default. I'm actually going to remove right now the uh, subnets, and I'm going to create my own. Uh, when you are looking at creating a VPN gateway, one of the things that you will require is that uh, you're going to need a subnet specifically called a, a gateway subnet. Okay, yeah. The videos have been taken a little time, so let's go forward. And once you have your virtual network created, did it jump ahead? No, it's creating it's creating it now. So the virtual subnet is actually, or the virtual network is actually very fast to create, right? This is all software defined. It's the That's gateway right. which take a longer uh, time as well. That's right. So once the 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 subnet is created, the, the virtual machine, no. Virtual network and subnets are created. Now we have to create the virtual network gateway. Now you give it a name, uh, region is typically exactly the same place. At this point, you do have the options to do a VPN or to use your express route uh, link if you have one. Then you select your type, which is route base or policy base. In this case, we're gonna pick route base. We are giving it a name and a SKU. And the SKU, as I mentioned before, is uh, the different SKUs will have different capabilities in terms of throughputs and uh, latency. Okay. Now we give it a subnet uh, IP address range. And then create a public IP address, because as we mentioned, we need a uh, static IP address. Uh, then if the active active mode is, uh, as you mentioned earlier, if you're deploying multiple gateways in an HA configuration, and that's it. Then you hit the create button and it goes away. And then it starts creating that uh, VPN gateway. And this will take um, 25 to 30 minutes. As I mentioned in this particular video, I sped up the video considerably uh, to make sure that it would actually finish on time for us to uh, go through it pro properly. So now that it's uh, finished creating, so imagine that we've been waiting and staring at the screen for 30 minutes you can go into that virtual network. And in your virtual network, you will see that we now have a VPN gateway with all of the proper configuration and the proper uh, IP address, which you're gonna need once you uh, set up your client end. So your whether it's a point to site or site to site, the other end of the um, virtual tunnel, you're gonna need that IP address, but you have to create that first. So through the portal, very easy. You can also create it uh, using Azure CLI. If you're a PowerShell user, you can configure it with uh, PowerShell. It takes about the same time to deploy, but it's a little quicker to uh, actually, because you, you have a script. So if you're running the same uh, virtual network uh, gateway in multiple VNets, you can run that script and then run it again and then run it again. Uh, everything you can do in Azure, you can do uh, in multiple different ways. Perfect. No, thank you. And again, this is also very interesting, especially also you could like, use um, ARM templates or BICEP, obviously, as well, because it's all ARM-based, right? Uh, if you want to watch the video again, it's also part of the learn module. Um, so you can actually, as unit four is actually going through uh, exactly that video. And you even have some nice commentary of Pierre uh, going through that. So if you're going to listen to that again, you can do that. That one's a little bit more scripted, though. That's... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the Express Route stuff. And we talked a lot already, like what it is. Um, but what do I actually um, like? Let's let's repeat quickly, like what it is and why we would actually do that. Um, but again, um, it all comes down to have that private, fast uh, connection, which doesn't go over the public. Um, uh connectivity right and then we have a couple of actually implementation options right there is not mm -hmm. just um a a one-to-one -one option or like it's not just one thing it actually can cover multiple things here yeah so your uh your express route um 
basically it becomes the connection between your environment and if you go down a little bit through the graphic it's easier to uh when we talk about the graphic to explain it uh you have your environment so the the bottom part uh on the right side of your screen uh the blue uh virtual network that's the that's your IaaS. that's your uh virtual network that you have whether or not you've got a ton of peered network in there or just the one doesn't matter uh, uh all of these will go through the microsoft edge then connect through the uh, connections, either primary or secondary connection to the partner's edge. And the partner, like for us in Canada, would be uh, one of the telcos. And then they provide the last mile to connect to your own environment. So it's encrypted from your environment all the way to our environment. Very secure, very robust. Now, we uh, in the middle, you can see that it says uh, express route circuit. So once you define you have your, your, you've talked to your partner, they've established the, the express route tunnel. Then on your, uh, in your Azure environment, you have to create the express route gateway, then it's connected to it. And then you have to create your circuits and your circuits is basically what routes the, um, it's not so much the traffic, but the, the type of application or the type of traffic that it goes. So if you're going, from a, a virtual machine in Azure to a easier a physical or virtual machine on-prem, it would use the secondary, in this particular case, it would use the secondary uh, connection. Actually, it's both mm. connections, but yeah. well, what they call them is um, the circuits, there's two circuits. There's one that is a Microsoft peering circuit, and then the other one that is a private peering circuit. Yeah, so we have the private peering, which actually is kind of like a replacement for the VPN, right? It's actually, um, absolutely. it's kind of like, uh, again, we can use it with both, but it's actually helping us to have like this private address space. So only like virtual machines running in Azure and on-prem, you can communicate over this as you probably used to from using a VPN. But then the other cool thing is now we have this express route in place, right? We're using this private connection. We set up these different connections, by the way, this, this private, uh, uh, in, when we see there the circuits, we have two connections. This is done for redundancy reasons. Um, but then you can see here the red line, which is actually the Microsoft peering. So what exactly. that allows us to do is actually when we like have these public IP addresses of Office 365, Dynamics 365, or even for Azure public services, um, we can actually still leverage that private connectivity that, that we have with Express Route. So we can still get the benefits of the latency of having that private connection, even though those are using public IP addresses, um, we can still use that actually doing a peering uh, with Microsoft. And again, this is also a lot of benefit. We see like a lot of um, Microsoft 365 or Office 365 customers are actually using this um, uh, as well. So their workforce connecting from uh, on-premises environments can leverage that as well. Yeah, because uh, well, I'll give you an example is uh, um, one of my colleagues who looks after a bank uh, in Canada, here in Canada, it's one of their requirements that uh, they uh, they deny uh, split tunneling, so everything has to go through uh, their express route. So if they have their Office 365 or any other SaaS, so uh, uh, Dynamics 365 or other public services that we have uh, in Azure, it all goes through the uh, express route, but just over a different circuit or a different peering uh, circuit. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, I see that also, by the way, it's not necessarily related to um, uh, what we were just talking about, but I see we have a question um, from uh, YouTube, I think. Uh, James is asking, um, uh, coming from AWS, uh, is there a way we can actually set up Windows Server and SSH using Terraform? So I guess he wants to, like, to set up a virtual machine in Azure running Windows Server and then set up SSH in that. And the answer is simply yes, you can absolutely uh, do that. Um, you can use Terraform to, do, to deploy the VM and then also to do some stuff on Windows Server as well. However, I will uh, play, uh, not devil's advocate, but I will say considering that we're today, we're talking about hybrid networking in Azure, uh, when you're connecting to those machines, uh, you have to create the vir virtual network uh, ahead of time. You can't just have a machine uh, without a virtual network. Uh, once it's on a virtual network, if you want to SSH into that machine, you have two uh, two uh, options. One, you can give that machine 
a public IP address, which can be dangerous because now it's exposed to the internet, or you can use uh, a feature in uh, Azure networking, which what we call uh, Azure Bastion host, where you connect to the portal, you select that, uh, that resource, and then it opens basically a SSH or a RDP connection to that server through a browser. So there's no actual end-to-end uh, -end connection to that server. It's a lot more secure, and you don't have to expose your servers to the internet. Yeah, it's definitely based kind of like a chump host as a service, a secure version of a chump host as a service. Uh, which, like, if you if you were into that, look at Azure Bastion. So let's go a little bit forward again in the um, uh, in the learn module. Again, we still have again explaining the different options we have, and we just want to highlight these again. Uh, there's also obviously site-to-site -site VPN, uh, again, which we can leverage, or then point-to-site VPN, uh, which is actually pretty easy to, to, set, it, to set it up. Uh, but then there's also obvious scenarios. Um, if we look at this, uh, why we would actually use um, uh, ExpressRoot, and we talked a lot about the benefits already. If you look at here, uh, it's actually like a layer-free connection. Uh, it has built-in redundancy. Uh, together with your Express Root provider as well. And then um, you can use it as connection to your Azure services, but then also uh, um, actually um, like for the public services as well as kind of like a VPN replacement with the private peering as well. And then one cool thing, by the way, we should mention here is also the Azure Global, uh, the Express Root Global Reach. And that allows us um, to connect different on-premise environments over Azure, right? This is actually allows us to connect these things together. Yeah, and that's basically leveraging the the Azure WAN. So you're connecting your express routes within whichever geography your your branch offices are, and then you connect them together using the uh, Azure WAN. So your traffic is always secure. It's always on, uh, uh, never goes over public internet. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's always uh, well managed and redundant. So this is pretty cool, by the way, just to also mention that um, if you have multiple company locations and they all need to be connected somehow or together, right? Together with Azure, maybe, maybe not even together with Azure, but maybe they just need to be connected between each other. You can actually leverage the Microsoft backbone or the Microsoft network uh, doing that. So you can like have a very easy entry and we're gonna show that when it comes to Azure Virtual WAN uh, as well. So there are some prerequisites. We obviously need to uh, verify when you set up a Express Root circuit. You obviously need to have an Azure subscription and a connectivity partner uh, to do that. Um, and then if you obviously you want to use it with Office 365, you also need to have an Office 365 uh, connection. And then from the networking side, obviously PGP is required for these uh, scenarios as well. Um, and you need to set up the necessary um, IP addresses for that um, specific setup. Yep. And the rest of this, uh, the the rest of this uh, unit uh, within the learning module, it uh, basically just walks you through all of the steps uh, that we talked about. So how do you create your your once it's your configured your express routes? How do you create your circuits? And how do you uh, which uh, type of peering configuration you want to put? And we've already talked about both of those. So the rest of this uh, unit is basically walking you through this and showing you what it would look like because we can't simulate this in a sandbox for you to try it because we need to have uh, a partner to actually lay some cable for you. Yeah. Even though I have a 10 gig connection at home, unfortunately, I can't show you this live. live. And I just want a little bit flex a little bit here uh, with my internet speed. So yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. We <laughs> hear it. We're about the 10 gigs. <laughs> so speaking of 10 gig, <laughs> um, let's have a look at Azure Virtual WAN. We really like are really psyched about it. Uh, <laughs> as, as we talked about it, as you could hear us from the beginning, I think the first thing we want to really talk about is this. And it really brings down a lot of different things together and makes our life, especially in these hybrid scenarios, obviously, uh, way easier, right? Yes. So we can do a couple of things here. We can obviously um, make this, like again, like Azure Virtual uh, WAN, 
um, we have a couple of functionalities we, we can actually support. So we can actually have branch connectivity, site-to-site -site VPN connectivity, point-to-site VPN connectivity for remote users. We can have express route connections. We can have inter-cloud connectivity um, between, for example, uh, VNets as well. Uh, VPN express route interconnectivity uh, between those locations. Um, routing, Azure Firewall, and encryption for private connectivity. So there's a bunch of awesome stuff uh, we can actually bring together uh, with the Azure Virtual WAN architecture. And I think this here covers it pretty well. So here we have, like, if you look at, uh, at, at the top part, the top part is all virtual networks or VNets uh, in Azure, right? So these are all, like, think about this kind of like the spoke uh, networks we have there. And then in the middle, you see the virtual WAN, which is basically our hub where everything comes together. And then on the bottom of the screen now, you can actually see the different uh, possibilities we have there, the different locations. So for example, like our HQ, uh, our headquarter, or the Contoso headquarter is actually connected using Express Route because they have a ton of different people there. They need to have a low latency, that they have a good experience. They have, need a lot of bandwidth there as well. And then we have, for example, certain band, um, uh, branch offices where we actually can connect using VPN devices. Now, the cool thing is also this onboarding, like if you have a lot of these branch offices, also this onboarding process can be automated, right? So you can then bring them and they, like as soon as you plug them in, basically, they connect up to the virtual van uh, as well. And then we also have some remote users, which I already mentioned when, by using a point-to-side VPN. Um, and they can also work together. And now with coming all together to this virtual WAN uh, hub, as I call it, um, we can actually now connect through all of the different things together, right? Uh, we can also leverage now, now, for example, like you can connect from one branch office to the other branch office using that virtual uh, WAN connection. Uh, obviously, we, we can also secure that and make sure that some connections are not possible. We can set this all up in the way we want it. Well, you can, you can, I, I just unmuted myself uh, a second ago as somebody rang the doorbell upstairs and all of the dogs in the house went nuts. So if I went silent, yeah, you know why the, the beauty of working from home connected to our resources through uh, hybrid services. Anyway, uh, as you were mentioning, the, the connecting all of this through using Express Route VPN, uh, point site VPN, it's great. But as we mentioned at the beginning, Using NSG and using firewall, you have to be uh, conscious of how you're going to manage the traffic going across uh, between your subnets, between on-prem and the cloud, and between the internet and all of that. Because at this point, if you've implemented it the way uh, Thomas was just showing it, you can actually have, you basically have one point of entry and then everything is interconnected. So you got to make sure that your firewalls are set up and your network security group are also set up. Now, but again, this is pretty awesome. Um, and then obviously we have different types there, obviously as, as we have different tiers or different types as we call it. So we have the basic and the standard tier available. So if you, for example, just wanna start and you only use a side to side VPN, uh, the basic tier should have you covered. And then if you wanna use more of it, we have the standard tier which also includes other available configurations such as Express Route or Point to Site uh, or VNet to VNet through the virtual uh, hub. And you heard me mention a couple of different things here. Um, so here we have a description of all the components um, which are actually uh, used into that. So we have the virtual WAN, uh, which is actually the virtual map uh, of your Azure network um, with the multiple resources linked together uh, within the virtual hub. And the virtual hub is actually where um, we have these things coming together, um, where we have the service endpoint uh, connectivity. And then the hub virtual network um, uses the hub VNet connection, connect to the hub to your VNet, right? So that is that is how you set this up. And you can also, this is by the way in preview, a hub to hub connection. So if you have multiple hubs, you can interconnect them using virtual WAN. Uh, you have a hub root table, and that is what also enables us to basically say what is rooted where um, when it comes to that uh, uh, configuration. And then you have sites, which sites represent actually the, the different sites you have. So for example, if you have on-prem VPN devices, you can actually like 
they are basically named as, as different sites there. So you can easily manage them as well. Okay. So by having that, actually the learn module goes now through how you would set this up. So first, what you need to do is actually set up uh, the virtual van, then create a hub. And then create a site again, which probably refer, like which not probably, but refers to the on-premises locations. And then you go actually and connect that site to the hub, right? Uh, and then um, that is actually then basically linked together. And so then you would go out and actually connect the VPN um, from that site to the hub. Uh, then we can connect a VNet to the same hub. And then we basically would just go download the configuration file and and go through that. And the learn module here really goes through uh, this configuration, how to set up the virtual WAN. It's actually pretty simple from a deployment perspective, right? Yep. When you actually like the setup in, in general is super easy to do. But what you need to actually do is actually have some planning. Obviously, you want to know what do you want to connect together, um, what restriction you want to build in, um, what, what should be able to talk to each other, what should not be able to talk to each other. So that is more a, a planning effort than actually like going through the portal and deploying this. And again, as Pierre will point out to me in just a bit, I can also use the CLI, I can use PowerShell, I can use Bicep, I can use ARM templates to deploy this and automate that process. And yeah. by the way, we also have reference architectures for this. So if there's a lot of things you now need to think of, um, check out the cloud adoption framework. There we have reference architectures with Azure landing zones to go through this. So I highly recommend uh, that you check this out. So I will not bore you by just going through all this, um, again, to create all these connections of what you should do. Let's talk about uh, DNS in our hybrid environment. DNS, the the all famous DNS. Um, <laughs> DNS is very important, as you know. Uh, mostly because in a lot of cases, it is a very big uh, point of failure um, and point of attack as well. So you really have to start looking at how you're creating it or how you're configuring it so that all of your machines, uh, all of your services, whether they're on-prem or in the cloud, can actually effectively connect and uh, be able to find each other. Okay. Yeah. I think this is this is this by the way also important. Like if you don't want to end up where you have scenarios where you need to extend the network, right? Like like where you actually communicate like where with hard coded IP addresses and stuff like that. And unfortunately, there are still some applications or some configurations out there which have these these, these stuff in place. So you definitely want to make sure that you have DNS in place. And DNS, by the way, for, for those who are listening and who are probably new to that, it stands for Domain Name Service. Um, and this actually does like kind of like translation of IP address to name, right? So that for those who haven't really worked with that before. So Pierre, how do we actually set this up? And how do we make sure that we can, for example, leverage the Azure DNS um, in our on-prem environment or in our hybrid environment, I should say. Okay, so there are multiple ways of, of uh, addressing this particular problem. Uh, number one is if you're only deploying within a single subnet or a single uh, VNet, and you're not really concerned about connecting to your on-prem environment, uh, anything within a uh, virtual network will automatically use a built-in DNS service. So when your machine boots and connects to the virtual network, it gets an IP address. Even though in uh, in Azure you have the the option of have a static or pub or or um, dynamic address, they're all dynamic. The, the only difference is when you select static, it creates a reservation, and the reservation time is the mathematical equivalent to the largest hexadecimal they could fit in that field. And I believe it translates to something like 136 years, give or take a few months. Uh, so all everything is always uh, dynamic. But when you have all your machines within your your subnet or your virtual network, uh, they will use the built-in DNS to resolve each other. The problem comes when you have multiple subnets or multiple VNets that need to resolve. Uh, 
or if you have on-prem that need to resolve machines in the cloud and the machines in the cloud needing to resolve machines on-prem. At that point, you have other options. Uh, one of the ones that has been used a lot uh, for a long time is um, sticking a uh, domain controller with Active Directory uh, a DNS zone, uh, integrated DNS zone uh, into your virtual network and then configuring your virtual network to use that DNS instead of the uh, built-in DNS in your virtual environment. Now, there are other ways of doing that where you can actually set up the internal DNS as a resolver to your original DNS so that it will look at your standard DNS server, like in your uh, graphics here, where from a client, the DNS query will go to the DNS server and then will forward that to the DNS in uh, uh, other VNets. So this is this is a, a, a bit more modern than the drop a DC into it, but you can do it uh, either way. Or uh, in my case, uh, let me show you uh, one of my machines here. Uh, I actually delegate my own domain to an Azure zone and I manage it in here. So I have went to my registrar and I say, okay, so I've been provided the, uh, the, the, the name servers uh, in my uh, domain registration. And now I'm managing all of my record sets and child zones within Azure itself. So you can have a, almost like a, um, a combination of different technologies that will serve different purposes. It all depends on what your uh, original or your, your end goal is, uh, if you're gonna, uh, how you're gonna do your, your, your resolving, if you're gonna have everything in one zone, or you're gonna have uh, zones and child zones and revol resolvers, uh, that's all possible within uh, our uh, DNS uh, in environment. So all right. the difference, the, the problem is, is that when you're looking at uh, limitations and consideration, when you're looking at Azure DNS, uh, you can only link to a specific VM to one DNS zone. So you can't have multiple uh, NICs uh, looking at multiple zones. And... That graph actually shows it really well, where if you've set up your forwarders properly, uh, then you don't have to, because it will then uh, take a bit of time, uh, then because the, the, the first DNS will have to get to the second uh, zone and then get the authoritative answer for you. In Azure, we don't really uh, provide a recursive DNS service. Uh, we have an authoritative DNS service. Um, so it, you can't just have, uh, uh, you can't just create a resolver service. So when I've created my uh, wiredcanuck.com DNS zone, it is authoritative. Okay. Okay. No, but that is pretty cool again. So we get kind of like a DNS as a service, if you will, um, where we don't need to manage necessarily all the DNS um, servers if we don't have them. But as you as you also pointed out, it's still absolutely okay also to bring your Azure Active Directory, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> your Active Directory um, domain controllers to run them in Azure as well to have like this set up uh, as well in some cases, right? But then... You have this little bit more modern approach where you can use Azure DNS uh, to do some resolving as well. That's right. Okay, so let's move on. The next part is actually doing the knowledge check. So what we're going to do here is I we have prepared a couple of questions, and you're also very welcome to also participate in these um, questions. So. I will go through the question, and Pierre, if you want to go through the answers, then um, we can we can do that like this. Okay. So, an administrator at Contoso wants to be able to communicate able to communications between a number of Azure VMs. He is planning to create and deploy. Which of the following solution represents the simplest way for these VMs to be able to communicate with one and another? So, a the administrator should connect the network interfaces of each VM to the same VNet. B, the administrator should connect the network interfaces of each VM to different VNets. And C, the administrator must configure a subnet extension to enable communication between the VMs. So in this question, I really think like, this is like kind of like a tricky one in the words, like it tries to basically make you think too far. Um, 
And so uh, be careful here what your choice is. Again, um, we give you a little bit of time here, but I think I mentioned this or you mentioned it. It depends. Uh, I think we both mentioned it. Um, how that actually works when you deploy a VNet and you have different, for example, subnets within these VNets, by default, um, they can actually talk to each other. And with that, I already gave the answer for that specific question, um, and it's A. Well, if we want to be nitpicky with that is uh, answer B, the administrator should connect the, ver the network interfaces to each VM to different VNets. But if these VNets are peered, then it will still connect. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. If they're appeared, but um, in the easiest way, we'll go with, with that. Um, the easiest way. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm always a fan of the easiest way. So let's go to the next one. And this is an administrator wants to deploy an Azure VPN, but is uncertain of the type required. She wants to enable communications from users back to Azure resources. What type of VPN should she implement? So again, I feel this is a very tricky one. So what are our options, Pierre? Well, there's a, uh, the options are you should implement a site-to-site -site VPN solution. You, uh, she should implement a point-to-site -site VPN solution, or she should implement a multi-site VPN solution. So and there's, a, there's a key word in your question that needs to be uh, highlighted to, answer, to get the answer. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, at, you could argue that, like in theory, I think you could basically implement all of them. Um, in theory, but, but the simplest solution would be the simplest solution would be B. That's correct. So we are talking here, especially because there's the word from users back to Azure. So in theory, if your users are all on the same place where in your like headquarter, you could also obviously set up a site-to-site -side VPN and then connect, correct? Yep. But the easiest solution, especially if you're uncertain and you only want to have a couple of users connecting to Azure resources, then point-to-site uh, can be the answer for that. Yes. Uh, also promise you, I'm not a big fan of that question. I just need to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> So um, this one is also, by the way, tricky for especially people who are new because we talked a lot about different peerings uh, in this in this talk. And this one is very. I want to. I do the question again. This time it's pretty easy. What is Microsoft peering? And I really, we, I really want to say it again. Microsoft peering, not VNet peering, not subnet peering. Microsoft peering. So uh, question A or uh, answer A, it provides a direct connection from your on-premises network to an Azure data center. B, it enables you to connect your on-premises network to Microsoft 365 services and Dynamic 365. Or C, it provides a connection between your on-premises network and an express route provider. And the answer would be? So I give some couple of seconds here for the people to like also answer the question on Learn TV. Um, but obviously, a Microsoft peering allows you to actually connect your on-premises network to Microsoft 365 services and Dynamic 365 as well. We should also include Azure services as well, because some of the public Azure services would be also addressed by using that Microsoft peering. Yes, so all of the majority of our SaaS uh, offerings. Exactly, exactly. Everything which is not like necessarily with IaaS, VMs, or where you have private IP addresses in place where we actually connect to SaaS offerings um, uh, with public IP addresses, you can leverage that. And again, there's some really good benefits of doing that, especially when it comes to latency, bandwidth, and all the good stuff. And as you also pointed out, I think you said like compliance and regulations, uh, regulatory um, requirements as well, right? They can be, yes. So, uh, let's go into the summary quickly and actually see what we talked about today. So we went through actually and talked a little bit about the Azure networking topologies, right? So from different, um, talked about the different pieces. We talked about VNets, subnets, uh, VPN gateways, express route, and so on. So we had a lot of different uh, explanations there and how they work together. I want to one stress one thing enough. Again, as Pierre mentioned, your skills, which you have from on-prem, absolute valid. They can still be used in the cloud. However, <laughs> it's a rethinking of how to do things, right? Don't just take do it the exact same way as you do it in the in in uh, in your on-premises environment. Uh, rethink how you actually um, would do it in the cloud world, right? 
And then we have implement, we talked about implementing Azure VPN, um, how you can actually connect that virtual private network. We talked about, and Pierre very nicely explained when to use a, or how to use a root-based VPN gateway in the Azure portal. Again, if you want to watch the video, it's in the learn module as well. Uh, we talked how to implement and why you would actually implement Azure Express Root. Uh, we talked about uh, implementing Azure Virtual WAN and how that, that works and what the benefits are of that. And then last but not least, parts of the learn module, we actually implemented DNS resolution in a hybrid environment. Perfect. Anything to add, Pierre? Do we, did, I, did I forget something? No, we actually, we covered pretty much everything that we set out to cover. Uh, of course, uh, you are more than welcome to run through this and even just bookmark that one if you uh, at some point have different or, or you're thinking about something because there's a lot of information at the bottom of each unit where to learn more and it will take you straight to the documentation. Absolutely. And then... I also quickly want to highlight, don't miss the next one um, on December 2nd. Uh, it's about implementing a hybrid file server infrastructure. Um, and so we will learn how you can actually like use that and, and deploy hybrid file servers in your environment. Um, so very interesting one. I'm pretty sure I'm going to watch that one. Um, it's going to be, again, live on Learn TV um, and on YouTube. And well. on YouTube and on Twitch and on Twitter, on all Absolutely. of the socials. So with that, I also want to quickly say thank you for everyone watching. Uh, we're quickly going to have a look at uh, if there are any questions. So this is basically your last chance to get your questions in. Uh, if you don't, if we don't have any questions um, uh, in that in that space, or you don't have enough time to actually ask your question, please feel free to follow up with us uh, on social media. Uh, ping us there. Uh, Pierre and I and many others are happy to actually help there. Um, so really thank you for everyone joining here today. Yeah, we have our little uh, Twitter handles here. DMs are open if you have questions. We are not troubleshooting people though, but we will help you with uh, uh, the vision and what you're trying to plan to. Absolutely. And with that, I want to say thank you to the Microsoft Learn TV team, as well as to you, Pierre. Uh, it was a pleasure to work you with you uh tonight for me uh, i think morning or afternoon for you hey, so, late afternoon yeah absolutely fun and thank you again for everyone joining i hope we see you in another one as well cheers